All righty. Let everybody filter in for today's wonderful webinar that we have for y'all. This is an exciting topic. I think it goes a little bit, you know, under the radar because it's a little simple, a little basic, but I think everybody will find that there are definitely a lot of use cases that maybe we're not thinking about for utilizing email templates, text templates, and just creating our own simple action plans. So I think there's just a variety. I mean, there's infinitesimal ways. That's a $3 word to <laughs> use them, you know, and so many, because there's so many ways to do it. I think they're a little intimidating to a lot of people. So I, yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you decided to talk about this today. Thank you. For that reason. Yes, indeed. So I think it's probably been a good amount of time for people to sign on when they join us, then they'll join us. Um, but without further ado, thank you everybody for joining us today on this month's rendition of Getting Fubbed Up with Bridget. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon, so I hope that y'all are ready to get fubbed up and keep that going for the whole weekend, baby. I'm so excited. This should have been the one where we we drank beer during it since it's <laughs> on a Friday afternoon instead uh, of Wednesday at lunchtime. Right. Get <laughs> fubbed up for real. <laughs> um, things just continue to deteriorate <laughs> as the, as we go on. <laughs> action plans. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe one time we'll have a special version of the getting fubbed up that I think at least once a year, we should just get roaring drunk while we talk about follow-up boss. Maybe we'll do it for like a Halloween edition. We'll dress up also <laughs> in Halloween costumes and we'll have our goblets of goodness. Deal. I'm <laughs> awesome. All righty, guys. So let's dig into the good stuff, shall we? Um, first, I want to talk about text templates after because I feel like email templates and action plans definitely correlate. Um, so with your text templates, I mean, I think this actually may be one of the most underutilized features in follow-up boss. Could you imagine sending out text messages to people without even having to think twice about what you're going to type and be able to go filter through your lists, send these as one-offs, and have more of that personalized touch than sending, say, like a batch email or something like that. So what I love is you can have them separated into folders. So if you wanted to create folders for your buyer templates, if you wanted to have seller templates, if you wanted to have lender handoff templates because everybody knows that a text is a great way for a lender handoff um mm -hmm. but what is the one of the best features about it that's also in your email templates is merge fields so you could do all the same merge fields as you do in an email template to make it seem super personalized as a text message should be but still be a text template. Um, so let's just go ahead and create one here. We'll do, let's say like if you have an open house coming up, I always think that this was such a great use case. So if you have an open house, maybe you have a bunch of active clients or people who are looking in a specific area of town that you want to let know that there's an open house coming up. Uh, best way to let them know and get the word out and have people more showing up to your open houses would be through text message. So We'll just go, hi, use our merge fields. <laughs> oh, I went too far. Yeah, you want to make sure, and I get this reversed, because we do a lot of writing of these for our clients. So I'm like, okay, who is sending this? Is it the, a the agent is... The agent name is the person who it's coming from. Yes. Uh, the person logged in to follow up boss and the contact is the contact name and follow up boss. So make sure you slow down when you're making these, because if you are in a hurry and you're just plowing through them, you can, you can be silly and make some mistakes. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Hey, it's Bridget and really that's the name of the contact. <laughs> we don't want that. So 
Um, just something short and sweet, you know, hey, open up with their name. So it's got that personalization. If you wanted to say who you were, hopefully if they are an active client, they'll know who you are. But if it's just for people looking in a specific area, maybe who came in through one of your lead gen sources, it's always good to just kind of let them know who the message is coming from. That being said too, guys, with email templates to help your guys's reputation for your phone number, when you're sending these messages, including their name, your name, as well as the company that you're coming from, totally helps with the deliverability and not getting flagged as a spammy message. Um, that's just a quick little fun tip, especially for those first texts that you're sending out to people. If you include all of those factors, it's going to be a lot more likely that it's actually going through to the person and not getting flagged as spam or, like I said, hurting your phone number reputation because nobody wants that. So we'll do, hey, it's agent name from company name. I wanted to formally invite you to my open house at 123 Main Street. Good old classic Main Street. Main Street's got a lot going on. Main Street just never stops. I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we'll just go with Atlanta because that's where I'm at. And so I know. Now, if you'll notice, Bridget for the purposes of our webinar, left out a word. And Grammarly is a great plugin for your Google services. So Grammarly works on your text templates, your email templates. It works throughout your follow-up boss. Yep. So um, we, you know, obviously, obviously we're not sending this out to anyone, um, but that is something good to know. If you, it's a free plugin. I, I use it all the time. Um, and it, it helps me clean up my writing. I, Where does that semicolon go? <laughs> I, never know. I never know. I couldn't live with that's what this little guy over here is. I was actually doing a training once and they were like, Whoa, what do I need to know about what that is for my follow boss? I was like, that's just me making sure I know how to spell and don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that it's really important. And I say that to say, Using something like Grammarly or having, if you're creating text templates that you're going to be using often, have someone else proofread them so they can go, hey, add the word you between mm -hmm. formally invite you to my open house at 123 Main Street, Atlanta, um, yep. so that you can send something out that is professional. Because if you are presenting yourself in a, a professional light and you have grammatical issues and spelling issues. Um, people judge you on that. They really do. And typos happen and you're going along fast. I know Bridget's very well-written uh, and well-spoken. Um, but if you don't know them, they're going to make assumptions about you. And this is often, if it is an incoming open house lead, it's going to be your first, uh, you know, your, that first impression. So make yeah. sure you have someone else proofread it, even if you text it to your partner or your mom or your dad or whatever. <laughs> you always got to test it out. Um, and so, yeah, we've got this created. Everything's going to fill in for us. You can share this template with everybody else. Maybe if you're tag teaming on an open house with another one of your agents, uh, if you have like a managing agent that you work under and you're the showing agent, something like that, you guys would both be able to utilize this template together. So we'll go ahead and share it to the class. And save it. So I didn't put that one specifically in a folder. So it's just probably going to be living in the my text templates. Yep. There we have open house. Always want to name, as you can see, like they're pretty specific about what the template's about. So it's that much easier to search when you're going through and trying to send these out. But and I always like to name them um, with like a temperature. Uh, if that makes any sense. So if I, if my tone is a cold reach out, like I've never had, um, you know, if the tone is cold and it's a cold call, that's what I'm looking for. I'll put cold. 
Um, so I do it for like recruiting texts, recruiting emails, recruiting cold, and then a hint about what's inside, because that tells you, okay, if I know this, if I'm going to text Bridget, I'd give her a warm text message instead of a cold text message. Cause if I sent it to her, she'd be like, what are you, did you mean to send this to me? We talk all day, every day. Why would, why would you talk to me like that? So the tone and the way you're presenting yourself Um, whether it's super formal for maybe someone you don't know or very casual for someone you've been into contact for a while, that's a good idea to to label them cold or warm or whatever phrase you want to use to let you know um, so that you can get a little bit more personal with those leads. Yeah, that's great. Um, And what's also great about that too is based off of that information and if you are sending them to certain kinds of people, you'll be able to see kind of the historical reporting and data on how those text messages are performing. So if you've got some cold ones that are going out and their scores are just not hitting it, it might be time to readjust some of that phrasing, make some adjustments. Or for instance, if you do have like an open house one that you're getting tons of replies to, or the score is really high, you could just come in and If you click on it, you'd be able to edit it and maybe just swap out the new address for whatever the open house is each time going forward. But a lot of info to be had here. You can always hover over. This will give you a little bit more info on how that scoring works. Replies, 30 day all time, people opting out, and then you're sent. So a lot of great data there for you. So now let's see one of these guys in action. So... Let's say we've got some active clients. So we'll go to our active clients page here and they are all of your active clients. They're out there shopping around. You want them to come and stop by your open house. You could just come in here, go over to your text screen, hit your templates. You can search it. If you have them organized into different folders, not sure why. Oh, I don't have any in there, so they're not generating. I was like, I just made new folders, but there's nothing in there for them to be here. So you could just go to your My Templates, wherever you have that stored. You could search it by text if you wanted to. Pop that bad boy in. Here we go. All of our merge fields have worked beautifully. Send that bad boy out. And then what's great is if you are working through a smart list that way, when we go to send this to our next active client, the text message communication is still stickied here. So it doesn't just go back and resort back to the notes. So you don't have to do any extra clicks or anything like that. And then when you open up the templates, it shows you're recently used. So you don't even have to go back and research for these templates anymore. It's going to be right here at the top. So you can just quickly and seamlessly shoot this out to as many as people as you need to. So mm-hmm. you can shoot that out. Those details are so important because if, if you're thinking like, well, what does it matter? A couple of clicks. Well, if you're inviting 150 some odd people, those clicks add up to a significant percentage of your time. (laughs) So it really is, it's helpful that they thought of these details as they were building this out. Yeah, it truly, truly makes a difference. So text templates, use them, take advantage of them, do them for everything that you can, because it's going to make your workflow so much easier. Now that brings us to our good friend, the email templates. So again, like with your text, you can have different folders for different kinds of subjects of what you want to be sending out. If you wanted to do some temperature type email templates, you'd be able to have that at your fingertips as well. So what's great about the email templates is you also have your merge fields, which you can include in the subject too, which I think is pretty cool and a little bit next level. So you can also make these a little bit more personalized. So for instance, if you have people coming in your database, you could have the subject say, you know, did you want to go see whatever property inquiry address they had? Right here, properties, you've got the address. Got the URL, obviously, that'll be more for the body of the message, but
right there, it's already showing that you know what they're interested in. So you're not just randomly messaging them. Hey, did you want to talk about real estate? Did you want to do this? It makes it a lot more targeted and a lot more. If that person looked at that property three times, they probably do want to go see that inquiry address and it helps set up your message. So when they click on it, you can add that, like I said, the URL, and that'll make it a clickable link to be able to go see more about that property. It's so useful, these merge codes. They are next level. You Just think, if you didn't have this, you'd have to go, you wouldn't only have to type it in, you'd have to go and look up what it is that you're going to type in. You'd have to look up their name. You'd have to, well, unless you're in the lead card, but you'd have to <laughs> look up the address and go all over town. It's, it's so helpful. Um, so this is a dummy profile. So I don't think we have any actual inquiry addresses in here to use this as like a visual example. So we're going to use our template. We'll stick with the open house theme. I think that is a pretty solid one. Um, is it my open house? So obviously still want to stay with the same naming theme, naming things super straight to the point. Or maybe you wanted to create a campaign. So this could be a good for like a one-off to get people to come and visit your house. So we'll start with that. We'll do like a, hey, contact first name. I hope to see you come. So again, share it with anybody that you want. You'd be able to come in. And this one could be even a little bit easier, so you don't have to go and individually send those texts. But if you wanted to just go ahead and batch all of these guys together, send all of these guys a batch email. We had a question come through before you go on. What if they have spouses? Will the spouses, how do we include everybody's name and email address and phone number? Oh, I'm glad that you Good asked. Question. Good question, Sarah. Thank you. And just at the perfect timing. So right here, this little box, include all email addresses. If you're doing a bulk and people are in relationships, this include all email addresses. If you hover over, you'll see, send this email to all the email addresses of oh. each selected person. That's including relationships. So if you were to click on that, you're sending that to everybody that you can send it to. That's whether if they have a work email and a personal email, and then a relationship and they have a work email and a personal email, it's going to send to all of those different addresses. So you'd be able to come in and we'll search for our open house. <clears throat> bada boom, bada bing. Send a preview, make sure we're looking good. Yep, everything looks like it's there as it should be. And then what's also cool is you could schedule this in advance. So you could send it immediately to all these people, or I don't know, maybe you come up with a really funny, good zinger that people are going to love to get them to come to your open house. But it's been after a couple glasses of wine and it's 1130 at night and you don't want to come off like a complete and total weirdo. Well, what if I told you, you could schedule that to go out in the morning so you look like a real life, normal functioning human being. So you could schedule it for the morning, you could send it in the afternoon, you could pick a specific date and time. This is also a really good thing to do for, you know, if you wanted to reach out to maybe all of your past clients or any clients really for holidays, if it's a Labor Day weekend and you're going to be on the lake on Labor Day, but you want to make sure that everybody gets acknowledged and that you know, you're sending out a little something, you can pin down a specific date and time to be able to send that stuff out to. I love it. Before we move on, we have a couple of questions. First, Diane asked about mass texting. Can we show how to do that? 
So unfortunately, you cannot mass text within Follow Up Boss. That's well, why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. So it's actually to help your guys's phone number reputation. So as I touched on previously with having that certain setup for the way that you're sending your texts and how that appears not spammy, Follow Up Boss really wants to protect these numbers from, you know, becoming dead numbers so that you can still use them and not have your reputation uh scores go down and stuff like that so if there was mass texting option that right there is a complete red flag of something being spam and that's not what we want to do we want these to be fully functioning phone numbers that everybody can take advantage of and be able to use as a work number so if your number gets flagged as spam and you can no longer be communicating with your potential clients or your current clients there's an issue there so just to prevent that from happening at all you can't mass text within follow up boss. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have another two questions, one from Joyce and another one from Diane about the inquiry address. So where does it pull that inquiry address from? Uh, is it the last house they looked at when it's, is it from an email? Um, where does that information come from? Yeah. So if your IDX is set up and you have your follow up boss pixel, you'll notice that when you go to somebody's activity that you'll see kind of you know the last viewed properties that they have or um how they came into your database so for instance let me see if no dan's already out of here uh usually dan is like a fake profile that has some of this stuff but he doesn't seem to be still in this dummy account but you could do the the inquiry address is going to be when you come in, say, if you have Y Lopo, for instance, and somebody comes in and they inquire on a property, that's going to be the inquiry address. If you have multiple properties that somebody has looked at, then you can also use another merge field. Let me go back to our templates here. And that's why you're looking that up. This is in the same vein as Emily's question of how does the inquiry address work when they've been looking at more than one home? I think that's what you're showing us now. But Emily, we we got you. That's a great question. Thank you. Yeah. So the inquiry address is going to be whatever address brought them to your website, right? And then for those other addresses where it's just the ones that they've been viewing, they have the last viewed option. So you could do the last viewed address, the URL, or this last five preview, I think is a really cool function. So if somebody's looking at multiple properties, I mean, even if they only looked at three properties, it's only going to show those three. But that gives you more of a general, hey, here's some different properties that you may be interested in, that you secretly know that they're interested in because they looked at them on your website. So that's where you would use your last viewed versus initial inquiry addresses. So if somebody signs up on an open house tool that you have, they're going to come in with their property address being that property because that's how they got into the system. If they're flipping through your page and they sign up on a form to view more photos or however you guys have your website set up, um, whichever address that they come in from is going to be that inquiry address. If they stop looking at your website, but then they come back a month later and start looking at more properties and maybe ask to see a showing on one, that's going to be the inquiry address. So really any address that they actually take action on, that's your inquiry address over just ones that they viewed. Those are your last viewed. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure. And that last five viewed, it doesn't say, when you send the email, it doesn't say, here are the last five properties that you viewed. It's a list of properties. So if it is a colder email and you're trying to catch someone's attention, you could say, hey, Bridget, here are a few properties I think you might be interested in. And they'd be like, I am interested in those properties. I was just looking at them. 
So it's a good way to use use our sneaky algorithm AI type stuff to catch their attention if you haven't been successful getting them on the phone or, you know, if you regularly send them things that you know they're looking at, you know they're interested in, they're going to be like, wow, she really gets me. I really, (laughs) I need to work with this person. How did they know that these are the properties that I absolutely loved? I look at these all day. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. And that's one of the things too, because with some of the platforms, you can see whether people are favoriting or just looking at things. And I'm pretty sure it does give you the option if you wanted to not include on that five, because you'll see a preview before you send it out, that you can eliminate some of those. So if you're like, well, they favorited this one, they only looked at this one one time, they looked at this one three times, you could eliminate that one that they only looked at once. So it doesn't seem like you're really kind of really digging into their brains. Yeah. Um. So those, that's really great for our one-offs. And now we'll talk about a little bit more of setting up like an email campaign type situation. So that's going to lead us into our segue of action plans. Um, if you have multiple emails or you're wanting to create an action plan of going out, you have to create the templates first. You can't come in and try to make an action plan and say, okay, I want this one to send an email. You have to have the template created first because you have to be able to plug that in. So I know when I was first starting out in Follow Up Boss and I was coming to try to make action plans, I'd be like, cool, I'm going to fire me up an action plan and make them and be able to send them out. And then I'd get here and I would get frustrated because I would always not No, I was like, how do I create an email template because I'm trying to do this? So have your templates outlined first. Make sure that you kind of have that blueprint, how many you want to have, how many you want to make. If you're doing a nurture situation, think about the timing that you're going to want. If you want an open house follow up when people come in, you'd be able to create that. I think we probably have some different open house ones in here so yeah like these open house buyer email one email two email one email one um email two email three email four you want to number them so that way when you're kind of setting up this plan in your head of what you want to send out to everybody when you go and create those plans you know which order you're going to want them to be sent out in So once you have all of your action plans set and ready to go, you're going to want to go to your action plans. Again, you can make folders for these as well. So we'll do stick with this theme here, right? Open house. You'd come in and there's a bunch of different things that you can do within an action plan that can trigger different things. If you're trying to trigger automations, adding tags, taking away tags, collaborators, really so much things that you can do. We're keeping it a little bit simple, a little bit surface level. If there's some specific questions about things, we're happy to address those. But for now, we're going to stick with just kind of a basic sending out a drip campaign or maybe adding a task for yourself onto something. So sending an email And then you can come in here and search your templates. So you're going to want your email one. So this is as soon as they register and they come into your database, they're going to get fired out. Um, Hey, thank you so much for joining my open house at this property URL inquiry so that it sends them the link so that they can go back and kind of revisit and reminisce on how much they love the open house, how much they loved meeting you as an agent. Um, And then from there, you're just going to continue to add steps and go along. So however far apart you want these to be, you don't want it to be too soon, but you don't want it to be too late. So maybe like every other day, hitting them with a little something. So immediately they'll get this one. And then the days after previous steps. So this would be two days after, meaning the third day it would be sent out. 
So that's how you can differentiate these. And then if you wanted to send that second template out, we'll look up open house again, email two. And then maybe after that, okay, they've gotten two emails. So one day after that, so the day after you send that second email, maybe you want to task yourself to give them a personal phone call or send them a personal text message. And it's good to mix these up so that it's not just email, email, email. I mean, that's that, what's that saying? Where if you're doing the same thing and you're expecting different results, like uh, an email, email's good for information, but most people are more likely to communicate with you if you're going to call them. Um, and if you've you've been introducing yourself and reintroducing yourself to them via email, when you finally pop up in their phone, that's gonna, yes, Diane, the definition of insanity. If yeah. you've been talking to them and albeit maybe a one-sided conversation through email, when you call and it says, maybe Bridget Ahern, they're like, I feel like I know her. I <laughs> feel like I know you already. They're more comfortable to pick up the phone if you're having if you're educating them at a high level, if you're talking to them about the things they want to talk about, mm -hmm. um, that it's so it's good to layer like a lasagna, layer your communications so that you are, you know, you're going to, it might take a little bit, you might have to call two or three times before they pick up, but they're, you're still talking to them. You're still engaging with them and they're learning about your communication style, the way you practice real estate and that you genuinely care about their best interest. And once they learn to trust you through that one-sided communication, they're going to be more likely to answer the phone and really start engaging with you after you've been. So I say all this to say, don't just accept some copy and paste one size fits all email drip or text campaign or whatever. They're out there. They're out there. Buy them. Please buy them. But they're a great place to start. Put your own style on them. Put your own words in them. Put your own personality into them. Talk to them like they're human beings at the other end of the line. And I think that's a very common mistake or misconception that there's some action plan that's going to save your business. You are going to save your business and you have to roll up your sleeves and do the work. So it's very evident to be the recipient of some of these with who's willing to do the work and who's not. And it's the people who are willing to get in and do a little bit of writing, make things personal, talk to people the way two humans really talk to each other. Those are the things that convert. Yep. I mean, yeah, I, that's what I tell people all the time when we're in here and we're working in accounts and we're setting up these action plans and we're setting up these really great smart lists and stuff like action plans are phenomenal to get your name in front of people so that they keep seeing it so that it registers. But at the end of the day, an action plan is not going to sell a home. They're right. great tools to utilize to try to get that engagement. But you as an agent who has the knowledge, who knows specific areas that they're going to be inquiring about and trying to talk to you about different, you know, ways of financing and this, that, and the other, you guys hold the power of that knowledge. And like I said, action plans, they're great for getting info out. They're great for getting your name in front of people. But ultimately at the end of the day, what has the power to sell a house is you as an agent. Absolutely. Um, are admins the only ones who can create action plans? Well, that depends. So there's a couple of different settings that you can do. Your team can have it set up based off of the power ups on whether agents do have the ability to make action plans or whether they do not have the ability to make action plans. So that truly is up to your admin staff and your leadership team. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It is my pleasure. So yeah, you just definitely, again, having that personal touch thrown in there. So you've got your emails going out. 
We're just going to follow up maybe two days after that guy. Oh, not 23. That'd be a little weird. Two days after that. And just continue this cadence of following up with people. What exactly? Of following <laughs> up with people. That was a little. <laughs> and um, reaching out to them, but still having those touches. So, And I like the way you can see. So if you see on the left, you have those eight dots. Anywhere in Follow Up Boss that you see those little grids of dots, if you're like, well, I like this, but I want to do it earlier, you can either change the days or slide it up and down. And then on the left, you can see how many touches you have, but then how many total days. So if you want your campaign, so let's say you do a post-closing campaign. So we're going to talk to our past client initially like they're a past client. You're going to send new homeowner tips, moving into your new home. If you're a resident of South Carolina, I don't know everybody else's tax laws, but there's a certain tax thing you have to do to make it your primary residence. That's something good to send. Um, so that's initial. But over time, you're going to shift from past client to talking to them as a future seller. So you can extend these emails to transition from past client language to future seller language. Then you can start sending your home seller alerts, things that have sold in the neighborhood, talking about ways to ways to sell your own home, ways to prep your home for sale, um, ways to stage your home, that type of thing. Um, so it really helps you because you don't want those days, you don't wanna start talking to a past client um, as a future seller in the first, you know, 180 days, they've only been there in their home a little bit. So as you get to that end of that first year, they're not new homeowners anymore. We're, I mean, not first time buyers, but they're, they're not new. You can shift. So it allows you to see that time frame really well. Yeah. And one thing else that I want to mention too, is maybe you have, you create this awesome plan and you're like, heck yeah, this is it. This is what we're doing. And then you have another idea. You're like, well, you know, what if maybe on like the second day I added this into it? That's really where these different sliding features come into play and really benefit you because you can add a step here at the bottom, put it wherever you want. Maybe you wanted it to, you know, create a task or add a tag for something. I don't know. We'll do 10 days. Maybe you have a weird 10 day thing. <laughs> but you can take that and be able to slide it and move it around. So now we just went from being our fifth step up to our third step. And you can man like manipulate these and move them in whatever way you want and adjust the different days whenever you want those steps to fall in. So you don't have to recreate the wheel that you've already created. You could just continue to add and to build as you see how these progress um, as with your, let's save that. As with those text templates, how we saw, you know, you can see some of that back, back end reporting and the scoring and how these things are adding up. You can do that with action plans. So if you create this great plan over here, you can see your engagement percentages. And if it's just not hitting, if you're getting like 10, 12% and that's an issue, then you can go in. And like I said, you don't have to recreate the wheel. You could just go in, maybe add or remo remove a couple of different templates. You can change up some of the wording in your templates. And then you'd be able to hopefully see that engagement percentage start to grow based off of starting small, seeing it wasn't really the quite, quite the right fit, and then growing and expanding on that to, you know, make these plans work better. And when you're thinking about writing longer campaigns, so a nurture buyer, really common ones are nurture buyer campaigns, nurture seller campaigns, past client to future seller campaigns, uh, something you're going to be dripping on someone for an extended period of time. Mix up the types of email. Of course, you're going to want to try and call them in between to have that nice human to human contact. But with your emails, send an educational email without an ask. 
and then send a shorter email with an ask and then send another medium sized email without an ask and then just ask. So don't ask. I mean, I know there's a certain, maybe when you're on the phone, ask for the appointment every time. That's really great for a new agent. You have to be able to read your, the other person really well, but mixing up those, hey, I'm just going to send you something without asking for it. So give, 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 ask, give, 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 ask. And that really tells people without telling them that you're interested in educating them. You're interested in building that layer of trust. And then you're going to ask, you're still going to ask for the appointment because you want to meet with them. You want to get to know them better. You want to ask, can I change your search for you? Can I change the information I'm sending to you in any which way? But don't just ask it, have it be your default way to end a conversation. Okay. Because that's, um, it, that's not how we communicate as normal people. And you want to make sure you're running your sales plays as authentic as you can, as you would talk to someone in person or over the phone. So make sure you're, you're not doing it every time, but you're sprinkling it in appropriately. Yep. Love that. Absolutely. So there is a there is a balance to it. And the more that you get in here and the more that you start creating these things, you'll be able, like I said, I love this reporting stuff. You'll see ultimately what works and what doesn't work. You want them to come to you because you're a knowledgeable agent. You have information that maybe they didn't even know about before, but they're getting it from you. So when you do have that ask, they're like, oh, actually you know what? Yeah, I do actually want to talk to you a little bit more about what kinds of different loans maybe I could be approved for because you've already given them that you know knowledge about some of these different topics. So, yeah. All righty, you guys. Well, we can definitely take any questions anybody might have. Like I said, wanted to keep this one a little bit surface level, a little short and sweet, just because I feel like you know, there's always these little things, especially with the email templates and the text templates about, you know, some of these underutilized resources, like having the merge codes and being able to schedule your emails in advance. So love to take questions if you folks have them. Um, and if not, because we did get some questions throughout, which were great questions, by the way, mm -hmm. then our time is over and thank you guys for taking the time to come and get fubbed up with us on this Friday. It's not even happy hour and I'm feeling so fubbed up and pumped about this. I know I'm pumped. Who is anybody on our call going to FubCon? Speaking of fubbed, we are going to be there next week. Yes, Joyce, we will be there in you there. Los Angeles Monday through Friday and Lee and I will be presenting uh, at 1.30 California time on Tuesday. And our presentation topic is using FUB as the hub of your business. And we're going to be talking about every single way to connect the parts, the operational parts of your business to follow up boss. And we're really excited to share. So please look out for us. Um, we'll be there to answer questions afterwards. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> we were excited to name this webinar as well. Um, we appreciate you guys being here and we'll hopefully see you in Los Angeles. And if not, we'll see you next yeah. month. Come and find us. We'll all be there. Chris and Lee are going to be on stage, but everyone's going to be moseying around. So hope to see some of your guys' wonderful faces. And there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up next week. I am, I'm really excited about it. So it's going to be fun. Yep. All right. Thanks again, you guys. Take care and we will see you next month to get more fubbed up. Bye, y'all.